probably it's like too enthusiastic or too yeah, en enthusiastic. I think I can try it because I'm here in this country. I can uh, travel a lot. I can drive through like cities, towns, and uh, I can uh, ask my audience and uh, how much mm, it was like regular average price for just Japanese food. Uh, we had nice headgear, including one that was uh, Von Ribbentrop's. We took, for the right number, we took absolutely everything. Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Vlog. I'm Alex and here we are in Pennsylvania. Uh, and here with Brian Maderer we are driving um, to get some sandwiches here because <laughs> it's lunch time. And um, we are doing like routine, our collector's routine, um, because we uh, meet each other to do like some business, uh, to buy and trade some stuff. Uh, and while we are driving, uh, I, ask, I asked um, Brian to Tell us some stories about like uh, collector previous, like past times. Uh, how did you buy items? Maybe something like really cool story. A lot of the early days there was a thing called motel buys, which would advertise, and we would go to different cities. And the at that time, the original vets were coming in with their war souvenirs, and we would try to buy what they brought in. And we would hear their stories, and some were um, quite incredible, like, people that went into D-Day before D-Day actually occurred. So it was instead of D-Day plus one, it was D-Day minus five to remove mines. And they were UDT guys, underwater demolition. And these guys, you know, this one individual told us stuff and his wife and his kids never even had known what he did. And uh, he told us that when he was finished out of the, I believe it was 10 that went in, only he and another person came out alive and all the hair on his body had fallen out from nerves. And he was told that he might have to go to Japan to do the same thing. And at that time he said, he just thought, well, I can't do it again. I would probably have to shoot off myself, commit suicide. And luckily, the atomic bomb took care of that problem. But um, makes sense. We had people from the SAS uh, where we visited, and OSS, SAS, uh, special troops, right? Yes, special ops group, and uh, you know, and then just standard uh, run-of-the-mill soldiers, and we had you know, career soldiers who were in before World War II. And we've had, you know, standards, we've had Knight's Cross documents, um, you know, nice me nice medals, uniforms. We had nice headgear, including one that was uh, Von Ribbentrop's diplomatic. Mm -hmm. Wow. How did you uh, how did you know <laughs> how was, do you know that is exactly Ribbentrop's uh, visor cut? It was the size. It was the manufacturer, the size, and the story that was accompanied with paperwork from the veteran where he got it, and it all just flowed that that was it. But mm -hmm. a lot of times we would do a city and. Advertising was very expensive even back then, and we would end up um, never ended up losing in a city. Uh, but some cities were just phenomenal. Some we had to actually load up the vehicles and ship the stuff back to home base because so much had come in. Wow. And you know, we had honor daggers. Uh, and we were like the second generation of mm -hmm. motel buyers out there. The first generation, again, you know, back in the 60s and whatnot, they were pulling in, you know, 
very exotic things, you know, standards, uh, DE. And how uh, can you tell us about process? So um, I know, it, can you tell guys about process? Uh, so you just come to, you just came to the town and uh, advertise a local newspaper about for a week. Uh -huh. For a week. And because it's like kind of um, treasure hunting. It is, yeah. it is. It was like, uh, it was a total, but it's a, uh, we would call it a crapshoot because you did not know what was going to happen. Just like when you're playing with dice, throwing craps, it's, you hoped you hit a city that was going to be great. And when we did the Pacific Northwest, we hit piles of Japanese swords mm -hmm. because a lot of the veterans ended up in the defense, Boeing, defense contractors were up in that Pacific Northwest. And we bought lots of swords. I mean, you know, I believe we were over a hundred. Over a hundred? Yeah. For a week? For a week, yeah. Well, and uh, how much um, it was, like, regular average price for just Japanese swords? Um, probably 150 bucks. 150 bucks. It's like more than 10 times, like, compared with our... Yeah. And was it like all beautiful or like all crap? Or no, <laughs> some, I mean, some, some were incredibly wonderful uh -huh. um, and some weren't, but the vast majority were very nice. Um, so you didn't take um, like items that fold apart? And... We took, for the right number, we took absolutely everything uh -huh. because, and then one thing that you would find when you would do motel buys is that if the person had four items and it was over the top expensive, the thing that you had to do was find out what he valued most. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was something that was minimal value in our collecting community. So you say, well, maybe that you know, you keep that and we'll buy the rest and then you give us a price and that's what we would end mm -hmm. up buying. We would lose one piece that really didn't mean much to us, yeah. but the uh, lion's share of the good stuff we got. And we did buys, you know, all over the country. And, uh, you know, from uh, Boston through Florida, through the, Carolinas, mm -hmm. Texas. So how how much time did you spend there? Like uh, because it's like I don't know. From Boston to Florida, it's like whole I ninety five. Yeah, no, we would. Well, we would do what we would do is uh, spend usually a week to two weeks on the road, and sometimes some of the other one of the other individuals in our group wanted to stay out even longer. He spent a month out on the road and the whole thing is logistics which is you have to you know get the inventory back to home base so you can you know sort through it see what because we had buyers for a lot of the common stuff and if it was really nice stuff then we would keep it and sell it to collectors we had and things of that nature, you know, it wasn't, but like you would pull in, you know, a hundred bayonets. So, you know, we would wholesale the bayonets out. We'd wholesale flags out. You know, we just had to uh, determine what we wanted to keep. And then sometimes we were spending so much money that um, we started to have to sell because to some local people because we uh, needed to replenish the cash yeah. so we could buy it? and uh, kept on going. And uh, most of the time, uh, can't really say, um, sometimes you ran into slope, slope times, but you know, we traveled, you know, all through the northern parts of this country mm -hmm. through wyoming and wow and uh individuals 
there's a few individuals that still go out today, but they're individuals that have more of a diverse, just not the military, which we were after. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing jewelry, they're doing um, toy, tin toys, and military, but they've got like four or five other things that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So they are able to diversify more than we were. And, um, and what do you think it's uh, in our days? Uh, our days, yeah. If I um, go and start Mattel buys, is it possible to buy something from people or it's, it's all t t totally finished? I wouldn't say totally finished. There's still stuff out there, but for the amount of money you have to spend mm -hmm. to get the return anymore, I would say it's very risky mm -hmm. unless you're going for multiple collectibles with either multiple people who have knowledge of these other items or you have knowledge of these items. Sounds like a challenge, actually. Yes. While, while I'm filming, I, right now I'm thinking about maybe I'm supposed to go and uh, try to to do it. Well, I do think. Can, can you like give me some advices uh, on how to like start it? Or... Well, one, most of the vets are deceased now, so you're going to be dealing with families. With families. Yeah. When we started, there was no internet. Yeah. Now, and now there is the internet and the families can research. Check, check and research. Right. I'm okay with it because um, I can like pay a regular price, right, for right. for for good items and uh, probably yeah. it's a goal not to buy like cheap like it was before, but to buy like, proper items. Yeah, a lot of there's a couple that are like I said still active, but what they're pulling, what they're pulling out now is gold coins, watches, things of that nature, which we, that's not what we were after. Mm -hmm. um, what they pulled out militarily, very little mm -hmm. in the last eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. And Makes sense. Uh, one thing that is also a problem is this new generation also is playing with the stigma of, you know, anything German, of the Second World War, oh, evil, it's bad. And we know as collectors, we collect it for its historical significance. We collect it because it's part of history. Mm -hmm. exactly. And we don't glorify, we don't think that the Second World War Germans were good and you know, the same with the Japanese. They were, they committed as many bad things, oh, yeah. but the stigma is not as great mm -hmm. against the Japanese as it is for the Germans because Western society does not understand the way the Japanese were and are. But I'm thinking about in our days, I also have like uh, social media, it's kind of, um, modern instrument yeah the, yes uh, so i can advertise through like my video blog or through like yes. instagram or something so so probably yeah that's cool i didn't think about you it actually, <laughs> you actually could you actually could utilize to reach out and touch yeah. possibly families and stuff and your blog and all that isn't costing you anything uh -huh. to advertise so there's a potential and you just have to look where there were, where neighborhoods haven't changed drastically as far as, <clears throat> like Levittown used to be a good source for stuff because a lot of the returning GIs moved in the first housing developments and Ron Levitt was one of the first big developers of those housing developments. You have to look for how things have changed over the decades and if it's going to benefit you. But, you know, you could reach out and touch more people than a newspaper, which we all know is a dying, yeah. which is a dying uh, way of advertising anyway. But a lot of the older people still use newspapers yeah. as their prime source of because 
computers and things of that nature, uh, all the different social media things are kind of foreign and scary to people who are in their 70s, 80s, and you know, just your average Vietnam vet now is in his 70s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a friend of ours, he's 98 years old, doesn't wear glasses and all that. His wife is 85 and she's a whiz on the computer and he's scared to death of it. Mm -hmm. So it just really depends on, you know, who you touch. Yeah. But it is an adventure, it is fun. Um, been utilized to reach out and touch possibly families and stuff and your blog and all that isn't costing you anything to advertise so there's a potential and you just have to look where there were where neighborhoods haven't changed drastically as far as <clears throat> like Levittown used to be a good source for stuff because a lot of the returning GIs moved in the first housing developments and Ron Levitt was one of the first big developers of those housing developments. You have to look for how things have changed over the decades and if it's going to benefit you. But, you know, you could reach out and touch more people than a newspaper, which we all know is a dying. <laughs> Which is a dying uh, way of advertising anyway but a lot of the older people still use newspapers as their prime source of because computers and things of that nature uh, all the different social media things are kind of foreign and scary to people who are in their 70s 80s and you know, just your average Vietnam vet now is in his 70s. So, you know, a friend of ours, he's 98 years old, doesn't wear glasses and all that. His wife is 85 and she's a whiz on the computer and he's scared to death of it. So it just really depends on, you know, who you touch. Yeah. But it is an adventure, it is fun. And they can make it like a fusion of like technologies and old style stuff, right? Yeah. So I yeah. also can think about. So can you advise me like uh, maybe like location, uh, like good locations for uh, for different stuff? Because you said like some items has the uh, some like areas has more Japanese stuff, some other areas has uh, more like fancy stuff or something like that. We can actually try. I can go there and uh, advertise and like try to do that and show it in the vlog I, <laughs> I'm excited I just uh, I, I never think this way before so well you could I would say the uh, anywhere along the East Coast would be one of your better shots mm -hmm. um, cities that haven't changed drastically with the demographics mm -hmm. um, Obviously, if you've got a lot of, we'll be kind, replants from other countries, they're obviously not going to have anything mm -hmm. souvenir-wise. So you have to stay in an area where mm -hmm. grandfather might have been in World War II, yeah. dad might have been in Korea, but somebody in the family still retains. Mm -hmm. and. In Pennsylvania, there are still a lot of areas where the people mm -hmm. are still the same, though grandfather has died, but they've kept stuff. And uh, Pennsylvania was always a good area to find things. Mm -hmm. And there's still very few buyers out there doing it, but they do still hit Pennsylvania. That's interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> you just inspired me to do something new and uh, to film it, to show it uh, for my audience, for our audience. So yeah. that's good. That's cool. Uh, so we got, we reached our destination. So we, yeah, we have some uh, stuff to do next, like half hour. So uh, thank you You're for, very welcome. for interview.
So guys, I hope you like it. We just filmed really nice video, in my opinion, and uh, I get really nice idea. And uh, probably it's like too enthusiastic or too yeah, enthusiastic. I think I can try it because I'm here in this country. I can uh, travel a lot. I can drive through like cities, towns, and uh, I can uh, ask my audience. Maybe you guys have something um, in your families, or maybe you have something in your collections. Actually, yeah. also we can get check. together. Yes, and uh, maybe you have friends who has some stuff like that. Um, they can go through it. So I have to think about it one more time. Please text your comments under this video. Maybe I just like uh, too romantic <laughs> about this uh, idea, but maybe not. Uh, so what do you think about it? Please text under the video. Um, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video until the end. Have a good one and see you real soon.